a political science professor from Ateneo and De La Salle University. And we have seen him in very reputable interviews in Al Jazeera, BBC, Bloomberg, contributing to the New York Times, Washington Post, The Economist, and The Wall Street Journal. Please welcome Professor Richard Hidarian. Hi, Professor Richard. Maraming salamat po. Although, um, nandun na ako sa kabila ngayon, actually, University of the Philippines Asian Center na ang aking latest affiliation. But, of course, uh, all of these institutions are close to my heart. Salamat po. Very, very nice. Uh, Professor Richard, okay, uh, you know, we're watching it from social media, from the news, and we're so concerned. We want to know the forces that actually led to this. As far as you can remember, in history, leading to the contemporary war, we're seeing in the news. Tell us more about this, uh, Professor. Well, I mean, obviously, the historiography itself uh, is very contentious, and it also depends on uh, when, where you start the conversation. My lightning now already, you know, I think that the message from heaven is already clear. Well, I mean, of course, uh, from the Jewish perspective, this is their historical land. It goes thousands of years uh, when it comes to their claims in the area. Uh, Judea, Samaria, and of course, uh, para sa ating mga Pilipina, especially mga Christian na nagbabasa ng Biblia, uh, of course, a big part of this is what they read doon sa scripture, ano, doon sa Old Testament in particular. No? So, yun yung point of reference. Uh, pag tinignan mo naman yung perspective ng Palestinians, uh, sila naman, of course, ang tinitignan nila yung fact na in, for centuries, no, uh, uh, different groups of Arab-speaking people, you know, uh, different looks, different ethnic background have been occupying the place through multiple empires. No, Kasi kung binabasa natin yung Biblia, yung kwento ni uh, Jesus Christ, this is the Roman Empire. No, But remember, there will be many, many other empires in the area, including the Arab empires, the Byzantine empires, the Sassanid Persian empires also temporarily, and importantly, the Ottoman Muslim empire. So, for centuries, actually, what you had there was no longer yung ancient uh, uh, Israel. And of course, you have the exiled, you know, the exiled because of Romans. But you actually had many, many countless people of ethnic Arab backgrounds, Arab-speaking people in that area. But I think the best way really to understand the root of yung problema natin ngayon, because kung tinignan natin yung gitnang silangan, I know today there's all of this Many stereotypes about the Middle East, oh my God, conflicts, ancient enmities, etc. But if you were in the Middle East, right, if you even read books by even conservative historians like Neil Ferguson, if you were in the Middle East in the medieval times, up to early modern era, right, these were areas of tremendous amount of cosmopolitanism and tolerance, right? If you were in Istanbul, for instance, you would see Muslim Turks living side by side by, by Jews, by Christian Orthodox Armenians, by by uh, Orthodox Greeks, uh, tremendously cosmopolitan and tolerant ang, cos ang Ottoman Empire compared dun sa mga, uh, mga counterparts, including the empire that conquered the Philippines, of course, Espana, which, of course, it had the whole Inquisition and, and a lot of uh, Jewish and Muslim people from the Spanish uh, you know, territories were driven out and a lot of them actually ended up in the Muslim world. So I think this, uh, we shouldn't forget this part of history that for actually centuries, many communities, Christian, Muslims, and by the way, let's not forget, Palestinians are not only Muslims. Palestinians are also Christians. They're Palestinian right. Christians. In fact, Nazareth, right? And many of these places close to the heart of the Christian people is today in West Bank which is part of the Palestinian occupied territories, right? So, so this is not just Islam and Judaism. This was a very diverse area. My understanding is, yung ugat talaga ng problema ng conflict ngayon is the legacy of imperial powers, no? The legacy of imperial powers. So I was just in Malaysia and Singapore over the past week or so. That area was colonized by Britain. You move a mm -hmm. little bit to India, you'll see that India and Southeast Asia, they have deep problems with neighboring Pakistan. And then you move all the way to, to the Middle East, what was the mandate of Palestine and to Israel and Palestine. All of this were, were part of the British Empire. And one of the biggest mm -hmm. problems with the British Empire is nung nag na sila, when their mm -hmm. empire was crumbling after the Second mm -hmm. World War, eto na, dun na nagkaroon ng gulo. Because one of the biggest problems we had in the Middle East was Beginning in the First World War and all the way uh, until the end of Second World War, 
The British were, for instance, giving contradictory promises to different communities about what will happen after the British Empire will be done. So mm -hmm. the Jewish people, and especially with the Holocaust and with the Zionist movement, the idea, the promise is that you're going to have your safe home here. You'll be back into your historical home. And then, of course, I know Lawrence of Arabia, right? In Hollywood, you would know that Lawrence of Arabia when the man was a British intelligence officer promising to the Arabs now that they're going to have their own ancient kingdom in the area once the Ottoman Empire is gone, once the British Empire is gone. So, ang ugat talaga ng problema na ito is how the collapse of the British Empire was not followed up by a just framework whereby these communities were promised contradictory things get what they believe they deserve based on their ancient claims, based on what they believe, right? Was close to their heart and where their community, the communities were living. So what you see immediately is from, is it 1948 on the, onwards, there'll be multiple conflicts in the area. The first Israeli-Arab conflict right after the declaration of the Israeli state uh, then you have the second one in 1967. There'll be another Arab-Israeli conflict. This time, Israel is far more dominant. Only six days, it comes to even dominate parts of Sinai Desert and it pushes to Golan Heights. And then 1973, the Arabs will push back. This is the Yom Kippur War, almost exactly 50 years ago. Uh, this time, the Arabs will have a little bit of upper hand. But the reality is that uh, uh, the Jewish state of Israel becomes an increasingly sophisticated, militarily powerful force that, that manages to defeat these invading Arab forces. And at the same time, increasingly that puts millions of Palestinians in a very difficult situation. So some of them end up as refugees in places like uh, Jordan, where close to 40% of the population are Arab uh, Palestinian refugees. Some are pushed to Lebanon. And then some others are in West Bank area, which is Malapit Jansa border with Jordan. That's Anjan yung Nazareth, Anjan yung Ramallah. And then on the other side, nakahiwalay yung Gaza Strip naman, whereby mm -hmm. other Palestinians will also end up there. No, So essentially from 2007 until now, meron kang itong situation kung saan sa West Bank, may ibang Palestinian authority, which more or less is cooperating with Israel and the international community. And then sa Gaza, mm -hmm. it's essentially under siege and under the command of Hamas after the Israelis withdrew from that area. Therefore, Hamas does not represent the Palestinians. Hamas the Palestinians. won an election more than 10 years ago or so, but they, they're just in Gaza, right? And they have no control mm -hmm. of the West Bank. They do not necessarily represent you know, all Palestinians all around the world. And honestly, I don't know. Do we have like SWS Pulse Asia survey types inside Gaza? Can we even <laughs> hold those? Right? Yeah. I mean, let's just practical. Like, if it's a question of popularity, like how can we really know, right? How can we really know? But I think, to be honest, I think may mga tao siguro dyan na, na sobrang nasaktan, na sobrang frustrated, na sobrang hindi na, na, nakakamit yung kanila mga uh, mga pangarap, asa, yeah. Like, yeah. frustration, baka may konting simpatsya. But that doesn't mean that, you know, yung ginawa ng isang militant group or yung isang act of terrorism is representative of all Palestinian people. As I said, Gano kalaking problema yung nation state kasi parang siya yung punot dulo no yung defining territories dividing lands and you know uh claiming what you know what were supposed to be others or promised to someone else how important is that in this conversation professor Gano kalaking problema yung nation state kasi parang siya yung punot dulo no yung defining territories dividing lands and you know uh claiming what you know, what were supposed to be others or promised to someone else. How important is that in this conversation, Professor? Very good point. Very, very, very good point. Of course, I, alam natin a nation state is a very modern construct. So back in the day, you had kingdoms, you had empires. As I said, okay. I mentioned many empires. Kasi kung Biblia, ang binasa mo, Roman Empire, ang makikita mo. Hmm. Pag binasa mo yung buong buong, yung buong kasaysayan ng, 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 ng gitnang silangan, there's the Sassanid Empire, there's the Byzantine Empire, there's the Ottoman Empire, which lasted almost 700 years. You won't, you won't find that in the Biblia, right? So if you want to understand the history, you have to also understand what happens after the exile of, or, or, of, of the Jewish people. No, alam mo, para sa akin, the reality is the, the nation-state construction has been traumatic almost 
anywhere in the world, right? In fact, if you look at mm-hmm. some of the stories, even the first countries, the first nation states that come to your mind, for instance, France, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Back in the day, not all French spoke French. What we understand today as French is what the language of Paris. So mm-hmm. many people in other parts of France had to be essentially forced into adopting what is the French identity, you know? And then, right. of course, today's Germany. Today's Germany was a product of re- unification, sometimes not so peacefully, right, of multiple small German principalities. So we can go on and on and on about it. I mean, in the case of the Philippines, we got our nation state out of our struggle against Hispania, right? And then, of course, later on, uh, the Americans, you know, gave us the independence, etc. So you're right. The, the nation state's history has been very bloody, has been very difficult. Now, Nevertheless, what we have to understand here is that the Jewish people, because of the horrible atrocities they have faced throughout history, right? Not only the exile and the horrible treatment they got from Romans, Jones Biblia, but all of the racism, all of the pogroms that happened in medieval Europe uh, and beyond. And of course, the Holocaust. Siyempre, maintindihan mo saan galing yung mga, uh, yung mga Jewish people. They want, sila nang gagaling. Yeah. Yes, they want a safe community uh, for themselves. Right. Right? They want a safe community for themselves. They want to have a Jewish... Uh, it's not just parang kingdom na nila yan, di ba? Um, right. so they feel protected. They feel protected because unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, uh, Carl, no, uh, anti-Semitism is a, is a, is a, is a reality and, and it's, it's a stark reality. It's a painful reality that is still living with us. Now, what makes this more tragic is sa isang banda, andun din yung mga Palestinians, right? Mm-hmm. Who also were subjugated by Ottomans, by British, and different empires throughout the years. And sila naman, they feel they're also entitled to their own nation state. So it's a very tragic situation because you essentially have two people who were subjugated throughout history by different empires and now dreaming of having their own homeland and here we are yeah. with this very, very tragic situation. I mean, lahat yan Abrahamic religion. Eh? This is, these are all mm-hmm. sons and daughters of Abraham, right? Okay. Ishmael mm-hmm. to Arabs and Palestinians. A lot of them are actually Christians that people also forget that. And then, of course, uh, the, uh, the Jewish people, right? So so that's why for me, um, mahalaga na maintindihan din natin itong shared history. And at the same time, let's forget there were better days when hindi ganyan ka-conflictual ang region na yan. And and yeah. you know, and to be fair, during the Ottoman Empire and the Byzantine Empire, much more peaceful actually in areas. And it was really after the First World War, collapse of Ottoman Empire, the European Western European powers coming in, and after they left, don't talaga nagsimula ng gulo. And what's making it more complicated is the presence of the hegemons, <laughs> the presence of the superpowers that even the United Nations is influenced. How do you see the role of, uh, uh, you know, the superpowers in in this? you know, a long-lived wars internal to them. But now, uh, you know, sumasawsaw na yung mundo and yeah. the United Nations seems to be kind of, you know, uh, complicating it even further. How do you see that from uh, well, governance uh, and politics point of view? You know, the United Nations, kudos to them, have been providing assistance to Palestinian refugees and refugees all across the world. Now, in fact, yung specialized unit uh, uh, ng refugee, uh, you know, handling of refugee issues at United Nations. It was in response to what happened in the Palestine-Israeli conflict. But over time, it's taking care of refugees all around the world, no? including refugees in Bangladesh right now, the Rohingyas who were pushed out of, of Myanmar, for instance, uh, throughout the years. Uh, so in, in the fairness of Sabina, walang saisayang refugees because they're providing the humanitarian corridors. They're providing the basic means of survival because, you know, Gaza, for instance, has been effectively under siege, right? Because the Israelis saying, we don't feel safe. You know, we're going to put essentially blockade on the part of Palestine. situation. You get what I'm saying? So it's really UN yeah. who's, who's helping that. So I, I want to be fair. Now, the problem really happens at the level of the United Nations Security Council, right? So this okay. is the decision-making body. Now, the problem is... The, 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 the composition of the Security Council is two levels. Sa isang banda, meron kang permanent members of the Security Council. Ito yung mga superpowers na nanalo nung Second World War, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so meron kang France, meron kang Britain, meron kang Soviet Union, now Russia, United States. 
And then nilagay yung China dyan, you know, of course, because China is the biggest country. Initially, it was Taiwan actually who held that seat, but China. Now, of course, the first thing you're going to say, but wala yung India, wala yung Brazil, wala yung mga ibang malaking country. That already tells you my problema dito, di ba? Uh, and then, of course, hindi sinama yung Japan and Germany dahil uh, kalaban sila dati, even if Japan and Germany are number, what, number three, number four biggest economies in the world, no? So, dun pa lang may problema. At kung ikaw yung isang permanenteng membro ng United Nations Security Council, meron kang veto power. So kahit mm-hmm. sinabi ng buong United Nations, buong United Nations Security Council, gawin natin ito, meaning let's push for ceasefire and de-escalation. Pag sinabi ng isang tao, hindi, walang mangyari yan. So, yun- so okay. the United States, in the latest round of United Nations Security Council meeting, chaired by Brazil, so Brazil is there as a non-permanent United Nations Security Council. So, yung, so, uh, so nakakaroon ng rotation yan, Yung, hindi sa permanent pero sa non-permanent. But the non-permanent ones do not have veto power. They have general mm-hmm. voting power uh, and uh, they can shape the agenda like what Brazil has been doing. Uh, and Brazil, of course, ang stance nila is very similar to Turkey, to Saudi Arabia, to Indonesia, to Malaysia, to China even. Na? Now, who are mm-hmm. saying, when you're looking at this conflict, yes, countries have right to self-defense. Yes, terrorism is wrong. Yes, we have to do something, but we also have to not forget about the plight of the Palestinian people. Ang isang country na no dito sa resolution na yan is America. Because ang position ng America dito is, andito kami para protektaan namin yung alay namin, Israel. Which is? And, mm-hmm. Yeah, Israel, of course. And, and that's why Biden was in Israel. And their idea is that, wag na kayo makailam, kami nang bahala dito makipag-usap para ayusin namin yung humanitarian situation. So this is what you have. So you could clearly see all of these videos coming out of, you know, everyone uh, raising their hands uh, mm. at least 12, I think, or something like that. Kasama dyan yung France, no? A European mm. country, Western country. And then dalawang abstention, I think Russia and Britain, and then US lang nag Right? So this is where you see, some would say dysfunction, some would say serious division. But just to, the flip side of this also is we have another very horrible conflict, which is Ukraine. And so yeah, Ukraine... I'm, I'm heading to that, actually. Yeah. Exactly. In Ukraine, I mean, you have the other situation whereby... I'm not saying that two conflicts are exactly the same, right? Because in yeah. the case of Ukraine, invade Russia by Russia, right? So very clear hmm. seeing... Um, uh-huh. Well, in fact, in the case of Gaza, it's it's really a confluence of tragedies on multiple levels. Mm. Of course, there are rules of war, rules of engagement, etc. Now, uh, in the Ukraine conflict, balik tad naman. U.S. Mm-hmm. Actually, United Nations Permanent Security Council uh, members, non-permanent like Kenya la, the other year, want strong action against Russia and humanitarian mm-hmm. corridor, but Russia and China naman ang hindi. Kaya tuloy paralyze effectively ang United Nations at the decision-making level. So, the parang auto, auto auto bot i mean auto mode na lang yung refugee helping but in terms of more drastic actions political pressure right medyo, medyo neutered ng united nations kaya many people are calling for reform of the united nations security council uh, structure itself yeah cuz i think they're the ones in power to actually unite and without that mechanism to modernize the process I don't think uh, you know it will be able to perform its role. That's why the theme ng anatig ngayon United Nations, uniting nations with a question mark. Because mm-hmm. historically, philosophically, internationally, no, even under international laws, a uh, very complicated yung conversation because um yung yung yun know, boundaries between permanent and and the other groups. Parang sila lang mismo yung pinoprotektahan din mga interest. And of course, America is uh, showing different you know, interest in this area and different interest in this area. Kakampi niya dito yung Israel na pinoprotektahan niya. Dito naman yung kabila, yung Ukraine na, and all of those. And that's why, you know, in social media listening, uh, napakagulo, Professor Richard. Napakagulo, nag-aaway-aaway magkakaibigan, hindi magkaintindihan ng perspectives. Hmm. Pero, of course, hindi pa natin napapag-usapan yung China-Taiwan, which is within yeah. the neighborhood. Uh, sure. how, how do you see how do you see the similarity or differences or common themes among these, at least the three countries, the Russia, Ukraine, the Israel, and yeah. uh, the Hamas, and uh, the Taiwan, China? What's in the central theme of all this conversation, at least in the uh, political point of view? Yeah, I mean, uh, for me, in fairness naman sa United Nations General Assembly, although hindi to non-binding, they were able to pass a resolution condemning uh, what Russia did 
And actually sa Pilipinas inisip natin kung dadalhin natin yung problema natin sa West Philippine Sea sa UN General Assembly kasi wala tayong maasahan sa Security Council, 'di ba? Kasi andiyan yung China wala. or wala. Now, kasi yung power ng Security Council is they can impose sanctions, United Nations sanctions like on North Korea for instance. There's UN sanctions na you cannot do trade X, Y, and Z with North Korea. In fact, at extreme cases, the United Nations Security Council can uh, can um, authorize military intervention, as we saw in the case of the Balkan Wars, Yugoslavia, mm-hmm. no, yung collapsing Yugoslavia in the 1990s, and also in Libya, uh, when Gaddafi was allegedly about to you know commit genocide against his own people during the Arab uprising. So. My power ang 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 ang, uh, ang UN Security Council UN. When, when yeah UN Security Council when it's unified. Kasi ang problema ngayon is bawat superpower may interest sila. So kung medyo mm-hmm. pumapasok pa na doon sa interest ko, I sorry, walang mangyayari dito. I pu push back ko yan, 'di ba? So so yun ang nangyayari. So of course, ang US malapit talaga sa Israel, yun yung position nila, solid ally sila, 'di ba? Uh, and then of course, pagdating naman doon sa issue ng Ukraine, Uh, ally ang China and Russia so protectan talaga ng China and Russia and Russia also has its own veto power right so on and on and on now on the issue of Taiwan ma- I mean mas directly pa tayo maapektuhan dyan because ang lapit ng Taipei diba? I mean kung it takes you okay. one and a half hour to, to go to Taipei from Manila it takes you four or five hours to go to other ASEAN capitals right so okay. so mas lapit tayo sa Taiwan kaysa yung mga ibang supposedly kapit bahay natin na ASEAN di ba so uh, God forbid if war happens then mas apektado tayo essentially pag bugbog ang Russia sa Ukraine magdadalawang isip ang China sa Taiwan di ba parang kung makita mm. ng China na hirap na hirap kasi Russia malaking bansa dapat yan madali lang dapat yung Ukraine eh, katabi lang nila it's mm. eh, Taiwan water yan amphibious complicated at saka Taiwan napaka progressive at sophisticated yeah. country compared to Ukraine no i mean no offense to Ukraine um so sabi nila if 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 mapakita natin na hindi kaya na sakupin ng Russia ang Ukraine uh, baka magdalawang isip na rin ng China i don't know my, my strategy ang, ang basa ko ngayon no kinokonek ko lahat ngayon na ang ginagawa ng China hmm. ngayon is they are presenting themselves as the balanced global leader. So ang, ang argument yes. nila implied yan na Russia, hmm. eh, friend natin. Pero tingnan mo naman yung ginawa nila sa Ukraine. Grabe naman sila. But of course, kaya nga, hmm. uh, China does not officially support the war efforts. Hindi siya nagbibigay ng weapon system sa Russia, at least officially. Right? So hmm. that means that China is trying to still be neutral. That's why... Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, still reaches out to China as a peace broker. The EU does. Mm. And ito yung interesting. Ang sinasabi ng China ngayon is, oh, yung US din, bias din yan. Dahil may aliado yan, hindi yan maging fair peace broker. So now you need mm. me to help you guys right. to deal with Ukraine, mm. to deal with Palestine. So yun yung game na, ito yung strategic game ng, ng, ng China. Yes, Let's not forget that the art, the art of war is perfected by... By China, since the Sun Tzu times and so on. I mean, uh, we cannot just read China by their press releases or by their history, but you know, but they're very strategic, and we know that. And between the two countries, no, the between the two countries, the U.S., which is obviously biased, always biased, and always pro, you know, pro attacks and wars. Ito yung China na wait and see, but wait, I want peace. At saka historically, meron ba tayong trouble with China creating or inciting wars? Professor? Yeah, so I mean, yun yung complicated sa atin sa Pilipinas, no? Because dahil sa West Philippines mm-hmm. issue, uh, ang tingin natin mm-hmm. sa China is an aggressive country, no? And of course, some mm-hmm. even Muslim people will talk about yung plight ng mga Xinjiang, Uyghur, Muslim minority, etc. But if you look at the positioning of China around the world, what they're clearly saying is this. Other countries go and invade you, We come and build you bridges. We build you roads. Parang yun nga ang ginagampanan nilang papel, ano, a professor, yung to balance it, to be the peacemaker. And, uh, you know, a superpower, who makes the difference? It's not a superpower that's so obsessed with defense and militarization, but, uh, you know, a superpower which is more focused into economics and uh, and other related uh, human uh, quality of life for human, for human right. beings. No? Parang ganun. I mean, Carl, then, uh, uh, Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just to be clear on that. Of course, ako, you know, just to be clear, uh, critical ako doon sa ginagawa ng China sa West Philippine Sea, no? Critical ako doon sa ginagawa pagbubuli sa atin. Mm-hmm. But we have to look at the big picture also, no? For a moment, uh look at the big picture. 
hindi po yung China yung uh, sumusugod sa Afghanistan at Iraq, no? Uh, hindi po China yung nag uh, you know gumagawa ng gulo, you know, sa sa Palestine conflict. No, I mean China if you go to many parts of the developing world, they're very popular. They're seen as the the good guys in a way who are quiet, hard working, uh, build you the bridges, are into diplomacy and the Palestinian leadership, I'm uh, sorry, the 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 Chinese leadership, especially the Foreign Minister Wang Yi, repeatedly said that the root cause of this problem is the injustices, historical injustices against Palestinians. That's okay. music to the ears of one billion Muslims and very rich Muslim countries like Saudi Arabia, Emirates, Qatar. So the Chinese are, you know, they're they're going for it. No, and 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 just a few months ago, China was able to do something that no one expected. It brought Iran and Saudi Arabia together. The two most yeah, powerful yeah. rivals in the Middle East. That was unthinkable. I'd like us to understand how, of course, no one can predict how is this going to end. Because this is not a history repeating itself. No, sasabihin natin, ay, parang nangyari na dati yan, lumang tugtugin na yan, ganito lang ending niya. Because I think uh, it has, it's more complicated than it was in the past uh, conflicts that we have witnessed in history. Um, but what is the what's going to be the effect of these to every Juan de la Cruz to Juan de la Cruz watching us? Anong anong dangers? Anong possibilities? What should we be worried or concerned about? Oh, para para sa akin, don't take anything for granted, no? Na uh, maging kampante tayo dahil isang isla, isla tayo na wala tayong border with. Eh, kasi yun yung blessing natin sa Pilipinas na wala tayong immediate borders with any country, no? Isa tayong archipelago, archipelagic nation, no? At for for 100 years, meron tayong ally ng United States. So medyo kampante tayo na walang susugod sa atin dahil eto na, we are isolated, we have US allies. Well, don't take that for granted. Things are dramatically changing. US is a declining superpower. It's an important ally. Let me be very clear. I think if we didn't have US ally, medyo mas bugbug at bully tayo dyan sa West Philippine Sea. Mm -hmm. But we have to learn to stand up on our own. We have yes. to learn to think of the Philippines also as a voice of the rising Asia. Because as much as, I mean, you and, you and I, Carl, we know maraming problema ang bansa natin. Maraming mahirap sa bansa natin. Maraming inequalities and problems. But do not forget the Philippines is top 15 biggest, most populous country. That the Philippines is top 30 biggest economies. That the Philippines mm -hmm. will be top 10 biggest economies in, in, in our lifetimes. That the Philippines mm -hmm. will be top 10 biggest populations in the world in our lifetime. So, Instead of looking at ourselves as a small country na umaasa na lang sa anong bibigay sa atin ng superpowers or or just bystanders, we have to take our fate, our strategic fate into our own hands increasingly. Without being delusional, of course we have to work with others, pero we have to assert ourselves. We have to assert ourselves, no? We have to be a voice for the global south, no? Hindi lang US ally all the time, no? Hindi lang automatically kung anong position ng US, nandun tayo automatically. Hindi dapat ganun. Dapat may sarili tayong independent na pag-iisip, no? Kaya ako, to make it a little bit political, in principle, I always agreed with President Duterte that we needed independent foreign policy and we should not be as dependent on US. My disagreement was in the execution. I, I, I think I agreed with the strategy but I disagreed with the tactics. Now, let's hope that under President Marcos Jr., will come up with a balanced approach whereby the Philippines can be a voice in itself. And the Philippines cannot be a voice in itself kung wala tayong strategic culture. Meaning, kaya natin pag-usapan ang mga komplikatong bagay in ways that allows us to assert ourselves as Filipinos and to protect our national interests. And speaking of the Middle East, damay tayo because millions of Filipinos are there OFWs. Now, okay. hindi sa Palestine Israel mismo, pero malapit doon. Diba? Uh, Taiwan, may paki tayo. Dahil kung may gera dyan, damay talaga tayo dyan. Yeah. I'm, from okay. region, I'm, I'm from Baguio, etc. Damay talaga kami. Plus the Edka. Plus Edka, the Edka, exactly, of course. Exactly, exactly. So, hindi mo pwede sabihin na, ay, ano yan, medyo masyadong, ano yan, nasa air. Hindi. Yung Ukraine, apektado yung presyo ng, uh, ng ano, bilihin. Because Correct. much of the food of the world, food basket of the world is is actually from Ukraine and Southern Russia. Fertilizers comes from there. Oil comes from Russia. So, lahat yan related po yan. So, dapat we, we need to be more globalized and more sophisticated in our appreciation of our complicated world. Wag tayo fatalistic. Yeah, nagpapasalamat ako sa Carl and among mm -hmm. very active Filipino citizens and leaders out there who are making these efforts and reaching out so that make sure na mapag-usapan natin ng masinsinan itong mga komplikadong bagay but not totally ununderstandable.
tao lang tayo. We will develop certain biases and prejudices dahil tao tayo. We can get emotional. So it's important we talk to each other and try to see always the other perspective para hindi lang tayo kampo-kampo, tribo-tribo. Because pag kulang na information, usually that's what happens. Kampo-kampo, tribo-tribo, misinformation, yeah. and that's what we're fighting against. Maraming salamat. Ang problema, uh, ang problema sa social media, yung Dunning-Kruger, really, is very strong, no? Ang yeah. tatapang, ang iingay ng less expert. At yung expert, tahimik, uh, hindi masyadong naiintindihan. O kaya nananahimik o kaya sa takot na yung bosses nila ay mawala sa wilderness. no? Pero I love your word, strategic. And by strategic, we mean long term. We should look farther and deeper and inner. Okay? And, and sabi ko nga, ang conversation na to should make us all retrospect, look back, introspect, look within, circumspect, look around. Pero don't forget to look forward. The prospective uh, capacity of humans Uh, and I always say that the distance by which we can travel forward is only proportionate to the distance that we can actually look back. And uh, thanks for reminding us of those historical uh, you know, um, accounts of why we have all these conflicts, hoping that there is one humanity that we are all uh, concerned about. And uh, you know, the vision of a better society, sustainable, peaceful, and uh, you know, happy and uh, living in prosperity. Yeah, and um, warning that uh, this conversation is just a portion of what is also bringing on the table the philosophical, the historical, the geopolitical, even legal, international laws and ethical. At the end of the day, uh, I said, Richard, being a you know a biological, it's coming from the science, you know, uh, young biological sciences are so well understood. That's why I expect that soon diseases will be over and will be gone. Viruses can be controlled, you know, and bacteria can be destroyed and your cancer cells are now being beaten by modern science. Pero I think what humanity should focus into is understanding the social sciences. Because right. I think nandito yung gap. That's why um, hindi natin naiintindihan ang isa't isa, hindi natin naiintindihan anong gusto natin kasi may kanya-kanya tayong interest. Thanks very much. This is such a wonderful conversation. This forms part of uh, this United Nations uh, Day conversation.